Welcome to another video tutorial from TuddyGameArtGuru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create a brush that looks like an embroidery stitch. The result should look something like that. Basic shapes, circles, rectangles, rounded rectangles and a heart shape with a brush assigned to it. Let's start with a textured intensity brush. This brush works with black as transparent, so I have my black rectangle and white as the visible color. I like to work with square brushes. In this case, you can make it a rectangle. I set my square to 90 by 90 millimeters and the nudge tool to 90 by 90 millimeters as well. That way I can easily create seamless brushes. Why did I pick millimeters? Just because I didn't change the document settings. Pixels would have made way more sense. I start with a single thread. I create a straight line with the pen tool and assign a stroke to it. I want a slightly wider stroke with rounded caps that allows me to place a few strokes inside my rectangle. That way I can create some variation and a bit of irregularity in my pattern. I duplicate the wide stroke, color it red, and then duplicate that pattern across the width of my square. The idea behind the red and the white is I can now select all red ones, hide them and create two different texture intensity brushes. I start with the white ones, for that I hide my red lines. I can easily select them by using select, select same and then pick the stroke color. I group all the red ones and hide the group and then select the black square and my white lines to export as a PNG. I set the width to 1024 by 1024 pixels and create a new PNG file. Affinity Designer uses PNG files for all its vector brushes. You get a PNG image that is stretched or scattered along the vector path. With the first PNG done, the second one will have a little bit of irregularity. I take my red lines, alter them using the node tool, give them slightly different lengths and angle. The only ones I'm not changing are the first and last line. I move them with the nudge tool to make sure they are exactly 90 millimeters apart. That way the brush will tile seamlessly. Place my red lines inside the rectangle to trim off the excess on the right and the left side, color them white. I export this one in the same size 1000 by 24 by 1000 by 24 as a PNG file. I create a new line with the pen tool as a test for the brush. I go to the brush panel and create a new group for my brushes. It's helpful to create a new category to find your brushes later. I'll make a new category for all these stitch brushes and create a new texture intensity brush. I pick my PNG file. This one needs to be set to repeat rather than stretch. I increase the width, which is the initial width. You can always change it in the stroke settings. I duplicate that line, create the second brush with the second image. Repeat the process, set it to repeat, set the size to 128 pixels. I have my two brushes, I give them the same color and align them on top of each other. This fills the gaps in one brush with the lines in the other. 
The idea behind the second brush is the effects I can give them now. I start with a bevel, but I also want to add a shadow. The top line will cast a shadow on the bottom line, increasing the illusion of depth. As a final step, I add a gradient to my stroke, giving the thread a little bit of a shine. When I duplicate the effect to a new object, you can see the result a little bit more clearly. I copy the first line paste the FX, duplicate the shape, copy the second line and paste the effect to the second rounded rectangle, making sure that it uses the two different brushes. Yes, I could have made the sample a tad bigger. Here is the slightly bigger image using two different brushes and adding the shadow and bevel effect allows me to add more depth to the stitch pattern. The downside of this approach is definitely the fact that everything is there in duplicate. The upside though is that there is more control over the effects, the depths, the shadows and definitely the color range. The alternative is a textured image brush which can contain the colors, gradients and not just black and white. In this case I will add the effects right to the brushes. I select all the strokes and give them the bevel as well as the shadow and a color gradient. I take the strokes and color them in a bright yellow. Using bright fully saturated colors makes it easier to change the hue and get decent looking color variations when adding a HSL adjustment layer. With the colors and the effects in place, I select my clipping mask and export it to PNG. I create a 1024 by 1024 PNG file that I can now assign as a new textured image brush. Again, I need to set it to repeat. I increase the size. The result is definitely heading in the right direction. It gives, at least in a smaller size, the impression of an embroidery stitch. I'm not quite happy with the gradient. I take it back a little bit and add some darker parts to the top. I select my clipping mask, export to PNG and create a new textured image brush from the new PNG file. This version looks okay. It does change colors nicely when I add a color to the stroke. I don't even need the adjustment layer. I can just change the stroke color and it will take on the tint of the stroke color I assign to it. For those of you who've seen my videos before, know I'm a big believer in variation. Let's take the first brush and change it slightly, add a little bit more irregularity, overlaps, angles, something to make it look less clean. I also change the gradient and play around with the depths just a little bit more.
I changed the shadow color of the bevel effect from a black to a dark red. That way it's a little softer and not quite as harsh. I add a 3D on top of the bevel to give it that extra bit of shine just for one of the two layers. I export the PNG and create a new texture image brush from this one and assign it to the strokes. Due to the edit 3D highlight, it's a lot shinier than the previous versions. It's getting closer to what I'm after. It shows that it's more than just one thread. Let's do another one, a more orderly stitch this time, a tight cross hatch where the top layer is angled in the opposite direction as the layer below. In order to make sure it's tiling seamlessly, I fill the rectangle of the clipping mask to be visible again and adjust my strokes. Seeing the textured image brush takes on the transparency, unlike the textured intensity brush. I need to set the background to transparent again before I export the PNG. I quite like that one. And just for good measure, one more, a very tightly packed cross hatch. I'm trying to reuse the assets as much as possible, so I'm duplicating one of the stitch patterns and move it into the next one. Modify, change the angle, change the scale. I tried to have an interlace, which didn't quite work, not while recording. It would probably require the shape of the tool and a slightly different approach than the strokes. So I'm just going with a layer on top and a layer below. I copy the style with the 3D effect on and update the top layer of my first stitch. That way it is more consistent and as shiny as the others. Here are three quick examples of the brushes used on simple shapes. There's circles and rectangles. The right patches are rectangles with different corners. For the fill, I use the brush as a straight line set to multiply and given the color black. That way it takes out all the color your textured image brush has. The heart consists of three copies scaled down with the contour tool. The innermost copy I separated the top and the bottom and assigned a pressure curve to the stroke. That way my stitch pattern gets scaled towards the ends. You can set that up in the brush settings. Going into the size variance, changing that to 100% means your brush will react to the pressure curve. The example on the right uses the textured intensity brushes. I have two copies of the frame with the two different brushes and can set the effects separately to give it more depths, less depths, different colors for the two stitches and create a more flexible approach. To create these brushes, I use the pen tool, work with the note tool, edit, 3D effects and bevels and outer shadows to the strokes. Put them in two different layers to have an above and below layer with different effects and then exported the results to PNGs. 
I created a few more brushes that weren't covered in this tutorial. Simple stitches that I put up on my Gumroad page. Get them for free. You can just enter a zero in the price tag. Play around with the stitches and create your own. Creating brushes is a lot of fun. If you haven't done it yet, have a look at my website. There are a few tutorials on brush creation in Affinity Designer. Try it out, maybe not for stitches, maybe for something else. The possibilities for brushes are near endless. Just keep in mind that these are bitmap images. This means unlike normal solid strokes, you can't expand them and turn them into vector shapes. You will be stuck with a bitmap if you export it to another program. There will be a raster layer where the brush effect was used. Just play around with it and have fun. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, tick on the notification icon and I will see you again soon.